Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Faros the Vagabond's little jaunt across Drang Lake. We find ourselves here in the foyer of Broom Tower this time, because, as we found out last time, I didn't quite have enough smelter wedges in order to clear out all of the warmth effects down at the bottom of Broom Tower here. That was entirely my fault, as it would seem I missed a chest somewhere back along the way, so I'm gonna, gonna go grab that now. Gonna have to come all the way back up here. Did I grab? Yeah, I definitely grabbed that. I remember I already cleared out the uh, curse tower, so... This little path down here... <laughs> or you could just do a little bit of a waddle. But this path down here is where it's found. So, I wanted to come back through and grab that. These guys, a little bit difficult, but if you can keep them staggered, they're not too big of a deal. Item? Just a human effigy. Whenever one of these guys drops something, you want to pick it up, especially because if they can drop their great bow, that might actually be a really great item on this character. I do want to send that down their way. I'm pretty sure I got the dispelling ring, but apparently I just missed out on the chest at the end of this. As we can tell by the fact that I don't have quite the proper amount of smelter wedges. Extra damage. More... Oh, black firebomb this time. Pretty sure that we're done with the whole fire mechanic, so let's switch that up to something a little bit more suiting, and let's go. Oh, just not expecting reinforcements from behind, so... Let's make some distance and heal up. Now I can head right on back in. Stupid great bows. They're a guaranteed stagger and it sucks. Oh my gosh! Stop guys, I just want the chest. Quite honestly, it's my fault for healing in these very obvious in their face locations. But that doesn't I mean, I'm not going to blame them. And that should clear our way through. Oh, of course, there's the one little barrel hollow, but uh, he's not going to be doing anybody any harm. Yeah. I came all the way through here and never opened this chest. What was I thinking? That's Those are my smelter wedges. Now I can head back down to the bottom of Broom Tower and clear out all of the horrible evil little side paths. Not side paths, it's just but the uh, ashen idols. To the lowermost floor. Once I manage that, I've got, I think, two drops hanging around on the floor down here. A bundle of titanite and a soul down the other end in some of these ashen corpses. But once I grab that, I should be pretty good to go. Just wait for this to break up so I can grab that. I'm gonna trigger both of these guys because if I don't, then there's no real way for me to grab the loot. Let's see if this does any better. This does slightly better. Not sure if it's worth the extra slowness, but I'm gonna stick with the choice at least for now. I don't know if that was a counter hit or just a better sweet spot. If it was a sweet spot, then that's actually pretty great damage. There we go. That's him taking care of. Is it one of these two? Yeah. There's my Titanite chunks. They give you like nine just lying around in individual drops. It's, it's great. Fantastic. Um, I don't believe there's any more drops in any of the ashen corpses over here, so I'm actually not going to trigger the second smelter bro. Just head right on past. I don't know if I want to bring the smelter sword into this boss fight. The fire damage isn't going to be very helpful, and it weighs a whopping 22 units, so if I get rid of that, how much does my weight go down to? Oh, oh I'm definitely taking that off, because it drops all the way down to 39.7. 
because the stamina regen breakpoints are every 10%, if you can get it really high, like 9.7, you're getting pretty much the most bang for your buck possible. Yeah, Soul of a Brave Warrior. 5,000 free souls. Who's going to complain about that? And that should be all four of these Ashen Idols, which means I can head right into the boss fight and be... Oh. Now hang on. I've spent... 10 smelter wedges, but only have 9 souls of Nadalia. I'm trying to think of where I could be missing one, and my gut says that it's in the Curse Tower, where Maldron the Assassin was, because I remember rage quitting from that last time. And good lord, did I need my space. That was just absolutely terrible. I don't know what it was, but I was just not playing smart, not playing well. A whole bunch of bad stuff. I haven't tried to parry Rain, but I, I really don't think it's a worthwhile move. He attacks so fast, and I doubt you could parry his greatsword, that it's better just to sneak hits where you can. As in, when he's vulnerable, not when... You just want to attack him. The thing is, he does really run you out of stamina. He keeps up a lot of successive hits, keeps combos going. And so if you are rolling, instead of just being out of range, you're going to have to keep rolling a lot in order to maintain your lack of damage. Oh no. Oh god. Oh, thank goodness. You are my buddy. No, I take it all back. You're evil. You're evil again, Raim. Why would you do that? Anytime he uses that move, I just hate him with everything I could possibly hate him. It's slow going, but we're making it. Only use two Estus the entire fight. I'm doing pretty well. Even get a stagger on him because the Butcher's Knife has a lot of stagger damage for a quick attacking axe like it is. Gets a little caught up there. You know, all things considered, I could have left the uh, idols on the other side of the boss room completely intact. Oh, and I rolled forward into it. And I wouldn't have suffered at all. I've been keeping him pretty much exclusively to this back corner here. go just keep agile keep light on your feet keep punishing him every time he locks himself into an animation and his health goes down just as fast as any other boss well maybe not just as fast but certainly just the same you don't want to roll away right when that attack triggers because if you do it will hit you anyways because of how long it is and the sort of back swing that it has on its start location. So, don't start rolling to his left if he triggers that move, otherwise you're going to get blasted in the face. All in all, I'm really happy with how that fight went down. I only made a few mistakes, cost me three Estus out of twelve, so I wasn't in any real danger for most of the fight. The only possible time that could have been bad was when he brought me down to that small sliver of health. If he had had more damage, then I would have just been dead outright, and you can't heal up from being dead. That being said, I now get to ascend the smelter throne and take what is rightfully mine. As in all the punishment that I'm going to be receiving from Sir Alon in this memory. Let's see... What happens if I just go with the Smelter Sword instead? It only raises my... Ah, whatchamacallit. Weight by a smidge, so I'll accept it. Takes me up into the next weight class, but 50% isn't bad. If you're going to be shooting for something, shoot for 40 to 50%. And by that I don't mean 55 and whatever, I mean below 40 or below 50%. Those are my preferred breakpoints, just because I like stamina. 
Stamina regen is really important to me. On almost all my builds, I uh, grab the Covetous... Not the, well, of course the Covetous, but the um, Chloranthi ring in all its current... For some reason, it wasn't triggering an attack. I was pressing the button multiple times, but it just doesn't want to trigger, so... Not sure what's up with that. <laughs> That's always funny. There we go. This thing hits like an absolute beast. I think that might be doing a little bit better if it wasn't a fire weapon, all things considered. You know, this is kind of a fire DLC, but I'll take it. Again, these guys have such a weird tail. I, I haven't gone back to check if that's uh, the same way they are from back in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, but it's still something that's just so weird to look at. Even though this is a small shield, it still can be useful for blocking. I see so many people equip small shields and then just absolutely never block with them, even in PvE, and I just can't help but wonder what's going on. Like, do they not realize they have a shield? Do they think they can't use it to block just because it's a small shield? It's just kind of strange. If you have... Oh. I tried to go for the predictive parry, and instead they give me the setup parry, so... Forget that, I'll just stun lock it. You see, that would have worked. <laughs> no matter, let's just get that backstab. When I'm in this memory, I like to use life gems more than Estus. It's one of the few times in the game where I go with that, just because I want to save as much Estus as possible for the boss. He's incredibly difficult, and you really don't want to be spending a lot of time healing up when you're facing him. So you basically need the faster Estus, as opposed to the life gems, just to save on time. Oh, rolled that too slow. Weird animation coming out of him. That's like the third or fourth time I've ever seen that. Usually he just goes with a regular slash to your face and just holds it out there. That little triple hit is kind of weird. I don't know what's up with that. That's him gone. Come on. And there we go. Life jam it up once more as we head on down to the last little leg of the area. I've taken the time to consider it and I really don't think that the bottom section is worth clearing. There's only a single item down there. I forget what it is precisely, but I don't think it's worth it. I remember thinking that to myself. And so I'm just not going to bother heading down there. It's a lot of extra enemies and a lot of extra hassle. And I am kind of on the clock since I'm recording, so I don't want to be wasting time diddling about with things like that. Especially if it's going to be as worthless as a single drop. Come on, don't retreat. I want to get a backstab. Like that. And you are fast, little bugger, but you die just as much... Mmm, dear. This is bad. <laughs> oh. What? What? I thought that there was only one of those... Ah, oh, I thought I had the other one dead with the first backstab, so I was okay to heal. Apparently, this this was not the case. Goodness. Well, let's go right back in there. I am going to swap out this for some uh, life protection and return to my smelt, not smelter, but the butcher knife, because... I still want to remain under 50, but that's a lot of souls just sitting there on the ground, and I refuse to let the, those go to waste. So, we're going to go back in there, and we're going to get those souls. Since I have the life ring equipped, I might as well human effigy up. There we go. Now it's time to come on in and do this all over again. This time I can ignore most of the lizards since they're not guarding any actual loot. Oh dear. Does the two-hand attack stagger? Yeah. 
it keeps up a good stagger so if I can roll and start the stagger that'll be the kill come on oh dear just one thing after another going wrong here there we go and the backstab that's nice that's just up before this next encounter I really want to remain as high on HP as I can really don't want to have to break this oh dear there we go break this life ring nor do I want to lose out on those souls so it's a little bit of a 50-50 balance between keeping yeah there we go oh that second attack well third attack I suppose should have been faster makes me sad oh dear did not want to aggro too such as oh he didn't aggro? Let's fix that. That was lucky of me, but I am burning through my Estus a little bit faster than I would like. Definitely not the ideal situation. It's weird to see that the parry only gets two ticks of damage, whereas the backstab gets three. Oh, come on, that doesn't stagger them? That's a little bit silly, but he drops his captain armor, so it's a fair trade ishly. Not quite, but I'll take it. That's for darn sure. This guy, I just want to clear him out so I can have a nice straight drop down. Apparently they have an incredibly high fire resistance, otherwise he would have taken five hits to kill. Because the smelter sword does have a higher attack rating than this butcher's knife. There we go. Oh dear. You know what? It's been fun. Oh dear, no, not that way. The more I do this, the more I realize this was a terrible idea. There we go. Oh dear, I should not have... I should not have tried to save weapon durability. It was not a worthwhile trade. There we go. Goodness, I am really taking it here. Let's try surprising them from behind. Oh, there are three of them. I want to avoid that, if at all possible. There we go. Get the nice parry. Hmm, now I can save weapon durability. There we go. Much, much cleaner kill. Draw both of them out. They're going to be little jerks and stick to their great bows. But that means I can run up to them, sidle around, and not get backstabs, apparently. I don't care what his item was. He can keep it. For all I care. It's not worthwhile to me. Mm. I'm a little bit worried about my weapon's durability but I think it'll be okay to go through the Elan fight. Hmm. You know, I've got 12 repair powder. I might as well. That's all that taken care of. I'm going to double life gem, and I'm going to remove the life protection ring. Slap back on my royal soldier ring. And now it's time for a bunch of buffs. Let's get one of these. Oh, did I repair powder? Yeah, I did. I also want a weapon buff. So let's go with some... F no, not charcoal. Let's go with... F can I not use that? Oh, I don't have my weapon out. I was like, what's going on here? Use that. And I am going to use a Bright Bug. I don't know if it uh, takes over instead of the uh, Green Blossom, but I'm willing to make that risk, if you can call it that. The timing on that is so wonky. Roll. Ah, oh, nope. Didn't get the roll. I'm going to stick to the lighter when it handed attacks now. There we go. Much better. 
those two-handed attacks were kind of getting to me, keeping me too slow to deal with him, so I want to remedy that. There we go. Switch over to my Estus just in case. I don't want to use any just yet, because it looks like the Bright Bug is really going to carry me through this. Oh, not going to delay attack? Fine. How about you? Yeah, he's already at half health. Oh, how am I... Am I regening health? I am. I forgot. The Butcher's Knife has that regen health. Oh, dear. I don't trust myself. I'm going to heal. I had considered going for the uh, bowing... Not the bowing, but the Seppuku Alon death. But it's not worth it if I'm going to have to come through and do this all over again. There we go. Then again, if I manage to... Okay. He did hit me once, but I think I could have survived that. At the health I was at. But if he hits me again, then I'll know that I made the right choice. However, it's not looking likely, so maybe I shouldn't have healed. Either way, that's what I did do. It is better to play safe than sorry, and that's Surlon dealt with quite handily. You can see how well the Bright Bug really increases your defenses against these sorts of bosses. It's a very worthwhile item. Very useful. That's the Smelter Wedge once more. Oh, considering I actually beat the Fume Knight, I should have a pair of Nadalia's souls. Oh wait, no, there, there's just one lying around, that's right. Let's go to Majula, spend these souls, and head to both the curse areas to pick up Nadalia's souls that are just lying around, because I am pretty sure that I left the one at the cursed tower open, and of course the one in the small little cursed section behind the door hasn't been claimed yet. That gets my dark bonus all the way up to 117, but I want more. I need more. And I am going to have to get my attunement all the way up to 20 afterwards, so... What level is that going to put me at? That's... I need 29. Add that up. That's 197. It's not quite meta, but I honestly think that the meta should be about 200 anyways, just because that's about how many uh, levels you got from Dark Souls 1, if you discount f uh, resistance. The soul le level meta was about 125, and for the amount of stats that you actually have that are useful, it works out a bit better if you're having a 175 meta or a 200 meta here in Dark Souls 2. Yes, let's head on over to the foyer. Both of the relevant bonfires, not bonfires, but Nadalia Ashen Idols are quite nearby to the bonfire here in the foyer. Let's grab this one first, just because we're here. Mm, yeah, let's let's keep the Butcher's Knife equipped. First, oh! Almost forgot. In fact, I did completely forget, but we're going to press on just for the backstab, and then we can bugger on out. This needs to be swapped over for the hollow skin mask in order to protect me from this evil, evil curse. If you're not going to do anything, I will. That's not going to be a kill shot, but that is. Plunder all the booty in here. Some nice radiant life gems. And let's take this guy on out before we have to face the possessed armor that just never dies. I think that is the worst part about these cursed sections, is that the cursed armor never flipping dies. It's just... Ugh. It's horrible. Oh. Yeah, that was my fault. I forgot there was the second scythe wielder around the corner. Will this kill? No, it will not. It wasn't even the stagger, really. You're just mean. That was the weirdest trade hit that I've ever had with one of them. But I'll take it. 
stagger him out, and immediately rush on over. I frame City. Even if he could reach me in time, there's nothing he could do about it once I've started that animation. There we go. I knew I could kill him through the shield, and now I just wait for him to fade before swinging so that I don't waste a bunch of butcher knife durability. Oh, the first two hit stagger, but the second two don't even do anything? That's really strange, game. Might want to rethink that. But that's this whole place taken care of. I believe there's a chest on this side. That is indeed correct. Old Radiant Life Gem. Is that what we're getting? No, Fire Snake. That's right. That extra pyromancy. This is the this is the Life Gem set. Nope, it's the Large Titanite Charge. Just ignore me, people. Though that is 12 Large Titanite. That's enough to get two weapons all the way pl from plus three to plus six. So... It's really nice. They give you just a bunch of free Titanite here. It's really nice of them. Hmm, didn't expect him to die to three hits, but I suppose I was wrong. I, did I grab that? It looks like I did. I definitely did. So, let's get out of here now. Sadly, that means I aggroed that archer up there, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. can still jug right on across Maldron hey buddy Ugh, hate him so much Maldron please there we go I don't think that's enough to send him running especially because a backstab is going to do more damage than that come on yeah now it's my turn to run from you Up on across, up on across again. You need to die. Ah, you need to die. You need to die. You need to just die. Would you please? Would you kindly? For all you fans of Bioshock out there, myself included, to be honest, Bioshock is one of the best games I've ever played. I when I first uh, got it, I actually didn't think I was going to like it too much. I was a bit younger than I am now, and my tastes in games hadn't really fully matured, and so basically anything that was a shooter I kind of judged fairly harshly. I didn't really appreciate the genre in general, and that was one of the first games that really introduced me to what a shooter could be. I have since heard that... Oh! <laughs> ah, ha, ha. I have since playing the original Bioshock heard that uh, System Shock is a very similar game. In fact, it's where Bioshock gets most of its ideas. But I can't get past the horrible graphics and uh, the very olden gameplay. It is true that some old games are diamonds in the rough, real gems that stand the test of time, but quite often old games stand up in your memory a hell of a lot better than they stand up in real life. A lot of the times it's a matter of you remember this game being great and you remember it being better than all the games you're playing now, but when you go back and play it, you find out that the mechanics are just so old and outdated. They're not fun to play, they're really management oriented, it's very difficult to control and that's the experience that I had when I tried out System Shock 2. I'm eventually gonna give it another shot just because I have heard so many good things about it but right now I'm not really planning on giving it a look-see anytime soon. Oh, can't parry that. Cannot parry that at all. But that was the usual timing when his attacks come out so I wasn't necessarily wrong in predicting that. He's going to go down and heal now that he's taking enough damage. That's fine. Gives me some more time to clear the rest of this tower. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is, this is bad. This is bad. This is terrible. How does that happen? Just give me the souls. Aldron, take a backstab for your trouble. Possessed armor. Give me some, give me some space, please. I'm dealing with Maldron. 
Me and him are having a moment. Can I get the kill? No. Cannot get the stagger. Heal. I had the space for it. Wonderful. As I was saying, Bioshock was just one of the best games that I had ever played that was a shooter, and it really opened me up to the genre. Not to mention, it has a very wonderfully dark atmosphere. It has a bunch of great mechanics. I'll just kite back all day. Since you guys have thrust attacks, you're not going to be able to make it up to me. And it has just such interesting gameplay and a really, really in-depth story behind it that doesn't reveal itself to you right off the bat. You really have to go hunting for the lore of Bioshock, just as you do here in Dark Souls. Go. Ah, that last little tick. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, so good. And so... I just wanted to bring that up while I was talking about it, because the lore in Dark Souls 2 is... Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Demon Souls even. It's just so great because of how you discover it, how it's really presented to you. And there are other games that do it like that. Bioshock is really great because of that. There's a lot of behind the scenes, and it's got a wonderful atmosphere, and it just feels like a joy to play. I mean... The shooting and the... all of the plasma... oh my god. I'm just leaving. When I say leaving, I mean dying on my way out, but... It was entirely my own fault. I, I keep getting greedy with those hits. I keep trying to, to engage multiple enemies at once. I keep rushing through to grab just that one soul or my bloodstain or whatever, and I keep getting punished for it. But now I can wear my proper mask and human on up and grab my souls and that will be it for Broom Tower. But there are a bunch of games that have a similar uh, feel to Dark Souls. Of course it's very different because it doesn't have the melee combat complexity nor the uh, stamina management. But it has other systems like ammo management and mana management in the form of the plasmids. And so there, there are systems in there that really get you thinking about the combat and how you're going to take on the next enemy. And you start falling into routines of using certain weapons and dealing with certain enemies in specific ways. And it even has like the optional challenge of uh, facing the big daddies or opening certain chests or hacking even when you know you might get uh, caught by the alarm system. There's just a bunch of really great mechanics in that game that really endear it to me, and it is one of my top games of just all time. I've got three that I really judge to be the creme de la creme of just everything gaming has ever given to me. Those being, of course, the entire Souls franchise. I, I find it fairly hard to distinguish between the two. I just label them all basically the same game because they are such a similar experience. Some of them are better than others and some things do some of them do certain things right while others get it better. Possessed armor sword. Not what I was looking for, but hey, I'll take it. But because of that I just kind of have to take them as a whole rather than look at each individual Souls game as its own creation. My other two top games of all time are, of course, Bioshock and, funnily enough, Final Fantasy X. That game has the best non-real-time combat system I have ever used in pretty much any game ever. I absolutely love the tactical turn-based combat. I cannot stand the running... Uh, combat system that they have in Final Fantasy 7 and most of the other Final Fantasies, and they brought it back for Final Fantasy X, too, which was really just a sad, sad little sequel to Final Fantasy X that really, really got me down. Like, I was, I didn't know why they had to release that. It doesn't fit Final Fantasy X at all. Final Fantasy X, the entire time, you're focused on 
Titus, Yuna's a slightly rebellious character who's uh, very demure, very shy, and not very... Um, you know, she has kind of an iron will, but she doesn't really know how to s assert herself. She gets her mind set on something, and she's going to do that, but at the same time... Oh, dear, what are we doing now? That's right, we're heading through all the giant memories. and That's the wrong bonfire, but... She has, like, an iron will, and she doesn't really assert herself very well, but if this whole time she kind of is mooching off of Titus's confidence, Titus being the incredibly cocky character who just kind of does whatever he thinks needs doing at the time, consequences be damned, and they really have a wonderful little dynamic working off each other there. And then Final Fantasy X2 comes up, and... Yuna has, like, an entirely different character. She still acts a little bit demure and a little bit shy at times, but she it looks like she's taken an entire new outlook on life. I, it's very hard to even see it as the same character if it wasn't using the same model, which it even isn't. They, they completely redo her costume to be something a lot more bombastic and befitting of a main character. It's basically the Rule 63 version of Titus's getup. Very silly, very asymmetrical, focusing on that weird Final Fantasy design in the center. It's, it's, I don't know. They kind of tear apart the characters that they'd already built up. And, oh, Drummond. Sorry, buddy, but you're holding a helm that I want. Love these banners. Really cool looking. Really immersion, immersing. They've got the crest of Drang Lake, even here on the broken depths of one of the towers of Drang Lake. They're still waving the flag. Hello, buddy. Great swords have the best critical damage out of any weapons that I have, so that's what I. W <clears throat> Where's my backstab? Where's my backstab? Not gonna give you my backstab? Fine. You're gonna die. But in Final Fantasy X2, they really tore apart the characters and the combat system and made it the sort of active, you're-on-the-clock type system that they have in a lot of the other Final Fantasy games. Whereas I just absolutely fell in love with the very methodical uh, turn-based system that they had in Final Fantasy VII, where you know what's coming up, you know how all of your delay attacks are going to affect the order of the combat, you know exactly how combat's going to progress. I go, you go, they go, however, but it's all broadcast to you. You know exactly how it's going to go. You don't need to be worrying about little timers at the bottom. You can spend as long as you want deciding what your next move is going to be because the other timers don't fill while you're deciding like in some of the other games. Even in the, quote, wait mode, I found that even if I had set it to the little wait mode and I was choosing, anybody who reached the their limit at a similar time to me still got to make their attack before I finished deciding, even if they were technically a little bit slower than I. And that just really got on my nerves, because it really broke up that very tight, clean interface that they had in Final Fantasy X, where they pretty much let you know exactly how the turns were going to run to... Oh, God. I should have run into the doorway, but there was a giant potty blocking the way. So, that was not an option. The worst thing about this encounter is that a lot of these giants have very big stomping footprints that actually stagger you slightly. It's similar to the effect of the Dragon Bridge. And so you actually get a little bit <clears throat> bogged down and your rolls become a little bit less effective. Ah, oh dear. I was like, abort, abort. It's firing back. Can I get headshots? I can get headshots if I shoot at the little anus face. And I think that's just one of the big uniting factors of games that I really enjoy, is that they have a combat system 
that is really, really fun and engaging. Whether it is Dark Souls 1, 2, Demon Souls, Final Fantasy X, or even Bioshock. Now, I do enjoy a really in-depth story, but if your game isn't fun to play, if I don't enjoy the mechanics, then it's, it's just not going to be something I bother with. There's no point in me playing through a game that I don't enjoy just to get a story that I could get by reading. And it's true that there are some games where that's not true. They do have a great story, and it's a, such a great story because of how interactive it is, but that's not always the case, and you can't expect it to be. So if you don't enjoy the mechanics of a game, it's better just to not even bother with it, in my opinion. That's the first memory of a giant down. I'm going to head back to the bonfire, and this is going to be where I'm going to cut it for this episode. I think it might be a little bit long running, but I think that I made a lot of good progress, had a lot of nice commentary, got to talk about some things that, I don't know, I just wanted to bring up and talk about. That's what a Let's Play is for, is it not? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again next time, and once again, welcome to all the new subscribers.